Anna Langford, student, activist and hospitality worker, has taken on her former employer Barry over wage theft and won. We catch up with her for a full story. I worked at Barry Cafe in Northcote for about a year and a half and a couple of months ago um, me and all the other front of house staff got together and mobilised to demand the wages and back pay we were owed when we discovered that we'd all been underpaid thousands of dollars by our bosses. So. After the rally, our story was filmed and it was put on ABC News and we heard um, that our boss had told ABC that they would back pay us and we were kind of thinking, interesting, we haven't heard that yet, why have they told the national broadcaster and not us? Um, and so I had to actually email them a couple of times to confirm that we would actually be getting back paid. And I finally got an email saying kind of begrudgingly, yeah, we'll pay you back. Um, but then in that same email, there was a threat to sue all of us for harassment of their business if we kept on talking about it to the media. At Barry, um, you would pay $10 for a smoothie um, and more for most breakfasts than what we were getting paid per hour. So really, we've really seen just how, how unfair it is and I can't believe I was justifying it originally and somehow being okay with it because um, it was, you know, it was the busiest cafe on High Street and they couldn't even pay us the minimum award wage. So yeah, that's not okay anymore and we're going to let the public know that. Our bosses, when they underpay us, they're actually stealing from us which um, is just a totally new way of thinking about it for me and I'm sure all hospo workers because we have this mindset that um, we're subordinate and insignificant to our bosses and we're too scared to ask for what we're owed. But when you think about it the other way, if we stole money from the till from them, then that would be stealing and, um, you know, we'd probably be charged for it. James Lee, volunteer at Hospo Voice and full-time hospitality worker, knows the ins and outs of the industry. People uh, who worked in Hospo, people who knew the industry, people who love the industry, coming together uh, to make it a more livable industry, to make it a better industry, um, and to, to fight for our legal rights that we should be, you know, entitled to under the law. You know, um, we're not asking for for extra on top of um, on top of anything. We're just asking for what the government has stipulated is is the best minimum for people working in our industry. Nicola Keating, head campaigner at Hospo Voice, sees collective power to be the answer. All of us have experienced the aspects of, you know, working in hospitality or outside of hospitality that are unfair, that are against what we wish and in order to pay our rent, to make a basic standard of living, to feed our children, to continue on with our lives outside of our work, we need to have a standard of living. We need to fight for those rights. And joining a union is how you do that. It is absolutely how you do that. Collective power is incredibly important. That's something that we have in our workplace that we don't even realize the potential of. Join your union. Work with each other to fight for the rights that you absolutely deserve. Oscar Shaw now sits on the green side of the fence working at a rewarding bar job venue manager, first of all he actually told me about a lot of law changes in Victoria. Uh, he went out of his way to say to me, I don't know if you're aware, but in the state of Victoria now, if you work more than 38 hours on a casual contract, you're entitled to these benefits, blah blah blah, which I didn't know about. Um, and he went on to say, so I'm really sorry, but we probably can't offer you more than 38 hours a week. Um, you probably won't work more than 38 hours. And I went, both. That sounds awesome. I, I can't remember the last time that I worked a normal work week. 38 hours, which is full time legally, felt like half time for me. Someone who I was used to working 45 hours a week as a minimum. Uh, and when I got my first paycheck and I realised how much money I had made for doing a pretty good job in a good venue, uh, or how much I was legally owed, um, it really hit home for me how little I had made in my old job or how hard I had worked for very little reward 